So in this video, we're going to be going through four tips for texturing. I am going to be using the 5000 plus materials library, which are very simple materials that are textures they can use in scenes like this. Come. So the first trick is all about getting our repeating textures, not repeating. So using the 5000 plus material add on just throwing in a concrete. Um, obviously this far away doesn't really work. And so moving into the shader editor, if we just change the value to say 30, we can see that we have that repeating texture there, which is no good. All I'm going to do is come down, move over the text coordinates. Let's go shift a search and type in Vor for Voronoid texture. I'll dump you in there, sunshine. Object to vector, color to rotation. And now we've broken up that repeating texture. Now it works okay with this sort of texture, but like if we zoom in, we can see that it does look a little bit funky, but it's okay from like a bit f uh, further away. If I were to come in and just kind of like change the location, oh, the scale's too big. <laughs> Let's do like something like that of a five. You can kind of see how the Voronoid texture looks like. If I go control shift left click, that is what it's looking like. Oops, control shift left click. There we go, that's a bit better. And so we're randomizing that color, which is grabbing the data from the UV map. And so obviously if we set this to one, you can see what it looks like. Let's put in back our base color, and then we've beaten that repeating texture. Looks a little bit rough, but that is because the scale is massive. So if we bring it back down to 20, we can see that looks really nice. Something that it does work well on is kind of like ground cover. And so I'm just bringing it up here on the left and sand ground with rock. <laughs> we can see that it's looking pretty good. We don't have that strong repeating texture. So there we go, there's, there's one tip. So with this next one, I'm gonna use concrete wall 12 from the 5000 materials pack. And we can see how it's all over the shop. I'm just gonna quickly UV unwrap, tab, to go into edit mode, U, cubic projection. Actually, that's that's not bad. <laughs> over here though, we can see these ones here have a little bit of pain. Let's jump over into UV editing and I'm gonna select them, rotate 90, rotate 180, just so that they're facing the right way. Yeah, that's much better. One of the problems is though, is that we don't have these lines lining up. So if we just kind of go into edit mode, Let's just move this around so that kind of like at least this line lines up. I'm actually thinking that we shrink the selection and bring it down to about there. And I'm actually pretty happy with that. <laughs> so that's just a really quick way of UV unwrapping. However, this is probably not the best to have the texture kind of, um, you know, where you just slap it on. What you would want is a texture that um, is more tileable. So for instance, concrete wall 11. So if we select that one and put it on there, you can see how well that looks like. However, if you're someone that does not want to do texturing, rather than changing it to flat, we can do box and box, box, and box, we gotta do it for all of them. Then we can increase our blend, but we've got these streaks. So this is where we can probably just change it to maybe generated. And although this is already a tileable texture, this is just gonna do its best to blend uh, the seams of the texture. And so if we kind of copy that throughout the whole thing, control V, control V, control V, we're now able to very quickly just apply material and have itself do its own work. So let's kind of just touch this one. I wanna add ambient occlusion all around this piece. So let's go bl brushed material. And if we have a look at the shading, we can see that there is no ambient occlusion here. So in cycles, shift A, search, ambient occlusion, and we wanna mix it with a base color. So shift A, search, mix, mix color. I'm gonna put the ambient occlusion into the factor, the base color into the bottom, and then we will put in the results up the top. Now it's a little bit tricky to work out what is the ambient occlusion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change A to pink, 
and we can very clearly see where the ambient occlusion is going to be applied. Now, if we want to increase it or decrease it, I'm going to go Shift A Search and put in a color ramp down here. And using this, we can go black and that'll make our ambient occlusion larger, or we can bring it white all the way down and then it'll just make it smaller. So let's go like that. We'll go with something like that. Let's change this to maybe a black. And now you can see that we've got ambient occlusion all the way around through there. And this is where if we want it thicker, we can just increase it and you can see how it really dominates that space. Let me make it a bit lighter, maybe give it a bit of a orangey tinge or a dirty tinge. And there we go. How cool is that?